Welcome back, John. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna read through this because I read through it once, and then I was kind of amazed by something. So let let me point it out as I go along. Uh, Jason, you are thin-skinned. I simply stated a truth about the Mormon doctrine and your beliefs. Yeah, there was something antagonistic behind what you said, though. That's all I'm saying. The rapture is unbiblical. Now, this word I know is an issue with some people because of the Latin that it comes from. The, the progress of the how do I say the direction, the preservation of the Word of God took. Um, it's actually very simple. Satan comes at the sixth Trump saying he is Jesus, deceiving the whole world and one third of the Christians. Six Trump, six Trumpet. I'm pretty sure you're saying that for the Great Tribulation, right? I believe the Great Tribulation is the sixth Trump. And so this is when Satan comes, pretending to be Jesus, deceiving one third of the Christians. This interests me. Um, Maybe more about that later. In my opinion, it may be many of the Christians awaiting his rapture. Um, the pre-tribbers. This intrigued me. Um, Satan is the prince and power of the air. The word air is the same exact word air used in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. It simply means spirit, not the air we breathe. So. Uh, when we get caught up, we get caught up into a different kind of air than the air we breathe. Is that what you're saying? Um, a different kind of air. I would see that as a spiritual air. In other words, maybe an ether. That word came to mind. I don't really know. Um, an ether, because we are now in the spirit when that happens. When we get caught up, we will be in the spiritual realm. So air probably doesn't really make any difference to us anymore at that point. So I don't really have a problem with that being behind the, by looking at the, the previous language. Uh, that event of First Thessalonians 4.17 is the same event of First Corinthians 15, 51 and 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but be changed. John, I agree, 100%. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, and that's the seventh trump out of the trumpets in Revelation. That just makes sense. That's the only other choice in the future, in the Bible. There's no other mentions of the word trumpet or trump. Um, I think there was one, but it doesn't count. Go find it. Uh, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Yes. Uh, see, so far, my point is, so far, I'm agreeing with you, John. And I, I wonder if I remember how you, uh, you started, uh, where you subscribed to my channel. Probably from the White Rabbit uh, thing that I did. I mean, that's where the whole thing kind of got launched from. So if you saw me on that and then you heard what I said in that video, that's probably why you ended up um, subscribing to me, right? So, so far we are agreeing on our doctrines here. And so I don't understand exactly what, we're, what we are arguing over. Um, I, actually, at the end of it, I guess I will say what I think it is. Uh, you all teach that this is the church being raptured. Y yeah. <laughs> Uh, guess what the church has no article here. Uh, it says, we who remain all will be changed. Yeah, yes, I, I agree. And I think the confusion here is over the word changed. I equate the word changed with the word resurrection. When we get resurrected, our bodies change from our physical state that we have now to a spiritual angelic state. That just makes sense. That's what happened to Jesus, too. He went from physical 
to spiritual. The kingdom of God is spiritual. Um, we have to, it, we can't see that now. So it's very un, unusual. We don't understand any of that. At the last trump, which is a chronology issue. When does it happen? There's seven spiritual trumpets in the book of Revelation. It just makes sense. Uh, which would be number seven, correct. Um, the end of flesh is at the seventh trump. I agree, because the seventh trump ends up pouring out the seven golden vials full of the wrath of God. That's a direct quote I just said there. Um, that's 15.7 in Revelation. Uh, but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Yes, this is the end of the play. Uh, do I dare call it a play? It's a 7,000 year plan of God. Um, we are at 6,000-ish. <laughs> um, and so when this comes and we get raptured, sorry you don't like the word, but it's the same thing of what I'm talking about. Um, okay, continuing. As the trumpet is sounding, the plan is given to the prophets is finished. Yes, I agree. Uh, and the seventh angel sounded, uh, and there were great great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever I believe that as soon as we go up into the air the trumpet sounds for I believe a day and during that day um, the vials pour out wrath of God on everyone with the mark below uh, I believe that's the day of the Lord I think that's a day of destruction and the vengeance of our God uh, on the enemies of God, Satan. And Satan is in everybody. And once you get the mark of the beast, you can't accept Jesus anymore. So you don't want to take the mark of the beast because that, that's an uh, unforgivable sin. That's probably the only thing that I can qualify as being the unforgivable unfor sin that we know of. <clears throat> um, let's see, moving on here. We simply gather back to Jesus at the seventh trumpet. I agree. In the spirit, yes. In a great cloud of saved by grace, yes. I'll agree with that. There's a lot of corruption behind this phrase, unfortunately, in the church. People uh, take it the wrong way. Um, but yes, I do agree with that by definition. Um, followers of Yeshua, I'm not a big fan of the uh, of, of, of using the Hebrew name instead of the English. I do not believe in that. Now, if a Hebrew person who speaks Hebrew wants to use the Hebrew name, I got no problem with that. If an English person who normally speaks English wants to speak Hebrew instead, uh, there might be something kind of wrong with that. I, I can't really necessarily, my cat, make a noise. Um, savior of Yah. This is the son, Savior of Yah. The Savior sent by God the Father in Hebrew. I get that. And I agree. <laughs> it's exactly what I teach. <clears throat> no, what's sad is you are so stiff-necked. You know, it's kind of funny. I actually suffer from a, um, I don't know what it is, a skeletal issue of some kind that, that literally does give me a bit of a stiff neck from time to time. So it's ironic you say that. Please pray for me, uh, everybody. Uh, I'm not uh, stiff-necked on not reading the original languages. E okay, see, and this is, this is your uh, real agenda, I suppose. And I don't really have a problem with that agenda as well. The importance that you're putting on it is not important to me because look what just happened. I believe the exact same thing that you taught and you received that revelation through reading the old, uh, the Hebrew and the Greek, but I read it in English and that's exactly what I got too. 
okay? It's just an issue over the word rapture. And when you look at just the definition of the, the word rapture of the catching up, when we go into the air, okay, we also switch to the spiritual realm at that same time too, but it's still going up in the air. Come on. And, and, and then the wrath falls below. I don't, I don't understand where, why you can't just accept the word rapture as a definition, um, you know, just like people do with the word trinity. I don't want to open that can right now, but you miss out on some of the beauty of Yahweh's chosen language. Um, I understand that. And I would suggest now, I'm thinking about the concept of the... Um, the body of Christ has many different members. And uh, you're a different member than me. I, I trust that you trust Christ for your savior, uh, as your Savior and that you're born again and that the Holy Spirit does a good work in your life to clean you up and all that. Um, but if this is your calling to uh, dig into the, the other languages, for the sake of helping people in Greece or Hebrew or Jerusalem, maybe, uh, great, go and do it. But I don't think I need to dig into those to get correct doctrine. That's a different story entirely. I believe I have correct doctrine of reading the English King James Bible. And that's why I keep saying, show me an error in it. And then I'll trust your Hebrew better than my English. But so far, no one in 17 years has shown me. Uh, uh, we've already been down that road. Uh, remember, God simply could have had the Hebrews speak English. Well, yeah, but see, language in the 7,000 year thing, uh, plan, has changed over time. Do you have any idea what the Garden of Eden was like? No, nobody does. We have no idea what it was like to be Adam in a garden described in black and white on paper. We didn't get pictures in the Bible. We have no idea. Um, <coughs> but it started somewhere. It started with Hebrew. I think. It makes sense. There was one language and it's the language of the Hebrews, so it, it, it would make sense if Hebrew was the language that originally started with Adam and then eventually turned into the Garden of, or the um, Tower of Babel, which stemmed into, I don't know, 5, 10, 15. I have no idea how many the original languages there were, but, you know, we, we ended up with the Chinese kind of languages and the Russian kind of languages. Um, and of course the Latin kind of languages, the Greek kind of languages, um, Arabic, which I believe stems from Hebrew. Gee, what a coincidence. Funny how that uh, genealogy worked. Uh, okay, so anyways, so through that progression it eventually became English. Um, Hebrew started, then the garden, uh, <laughs> I said it again, the Tower of Babel, and then eventually we got to English. God knew that was going to happen. That's why he put his word in the language that was going to be important in the end times. He thought ahead. I think that's pretty clever of God. So when we both come to the same conclusions, then I think we're okay. And we shouldn't be fighting with each other. Uh, but he chose Hebrew for a very specific reason lost to you. It has its magic. I get that. I understand the Bible code stuff from Chuck Missler, and I get it. But you don't need it for correct doctrine aside from the English. <clears throat> uh, but he chose he. One item lost in the English is called the Aleph Tav, and it is the first and last letter of the, of the Hebrew alphabet. In Greek, it would be the Alpha and Omega, and in English, it would be the A and the Z, or Z if you're in Canada, I think. Um, 
why why can't English be why can't English join that group? <laughs> it makes sense. It started in Hebrew. Then it went to Greek for Jesus' day. That's what the Septuagint was for. And I think God did the Septuagint. And then he did English through the king of English. Okay, king of England. Don't make fun of me for that. It's um, king of the, of the peoples that speak English, which ended up being more than just England. That's why I said it that way. It just makes sense for the for the for Jesus' second coming. That's the whole idea. Then the plan's over. I don't think there's going to be a fourth world. Well, maybe at the end of the millennium there is a fourth language. I, I don't understand how that would work, but because how's it going to spread from English? I think it would remain English for the rest of the time. But uh, who knows? I I have no idea what languages are like in uh, the spiritual realm. When I get there, I'll know how to talk. Maybe. Uh, where was I? Yeah, the Alpha and the Omega, and the A and the Z. God has placed this Aleph Tav over 6,000 times in the Tanakh, the Hebrew word for the Old Testament, the scriptures. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course he would put the Aleph and Tav in the Old Testament, because that's the language it was from. But you got to understand the translation, too. And the translation is going to mean just the same thing. It's got to be a perfect translation, capital P. And so far, so good. We're coming up with the same doctrines, <laughs> pointing to Jesus and his divinity. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Jesus is the son of God, and that makes him God. Uh, the Jews call it a direct object pointer and never understood the significance of it because they are stiff-necked. Uh, okay, yeah, they missed their calling, obviously, and Jesus did end up getting crucified because they shouted, Crucify him! Yes, I get it. Um, they didn't see it. But that was the point. Uh, my point is that you are missing out on much of the wonders of God's word by not er using the original languages. I'm not, okay, if I'm missing out on wonders, that's different from screwing up on doctrines, okay? Um, because we believe the same thing is going to happen uh, in basically the same chronology, I guess, um, in the end times. Because we read scripture literally. You're only quibbling over the word rapture to describe it. And that's probably because you are so anti-dispensational of the pre-trib rapture and don't want to don't want to follow under fall under the label that they use. So you're fighting against the Latin word, because it's not the Greek, it's not the Hebrew. So I, I you know, but you can understand how God's progress of His word, the preservation of it is the word really. The preservation of his word went from Hebrew into the Greek, then into Latin, and then filtered down through a purification system. That's what it says in Psalm 12, 6 and 7. There, it says uh, purified. Um, to English, which has its own magic to it too, but we take it all for granted because we speak English. If a, per if a person speaking only Hebrew learned English and found out the, the, the intricacies of the English language that make that cool and that cool and that awesome and that awesome and that praiseworthy, then, you know, <clears throat> I think I made my point. Post, I got to get used to doing this so that I know where I am. <laughs> I will post a link to one example of God's beauty uh, of the language he chose to write the Old Testament in, in <clears throat> and how that is it is lost to those who study one dimensionally. Okay, um, go at it. That's your calling. It's not mine. To go into the other languages is a hobby, uh, if you will, a spiritual for the Lord hobby. I'm not trying to downplay it as being um, like stamp collecting. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But it's, it's your office. It's maybe your calling. And get, get those treasures out of the original languages. 
But if there's a doc doctrinal difference between the English and the Hebrew, then I have to blame the interpretation of the Hebrew. I have to blame that through, it might be a bad skull, just an interpretation issue of, you know, what the par person wants it to say. That's eisegesis. But it might be a bad definition that's in a, uh, a man-made dictionary that somebody wrote that wasn't inspired. And that definition might have a word in there that's m maybe coming from another use in the Bible somewhere, but then the person tries to use that word another place in the Bible, trying to say, well, see, it could mean this. And that opens the, the door for Satan to say, yea, hath God said. So uh, trusting in the scholarship of man for the Hebrew language and the Greek language two languages that literally were dead languages for a number of centuries. Am I wrong on that? I know that the Greek language and the Greek uh, country, and but it's 2,000 years later. Is their language the same? How long did it take the English language to come around? Because I'm pretty sure English didn't even exist in the days of Greece. It broke free out of the Roman Empire. It came from Latin. That's why it went through Latin, through the Vulgate first, and then filtered down into English. Uh, it just makes sense. Um, trust the King James. It'll never let you down, I promise. Praise God. Okay, like, I think I made my point, really, that <clears throat> if we're arguing over doctrines, it's probably because we're arguing over the definitions of words that we don't really understand what the other guy even means by the word rapture. I mean that by the word rapture. And all the word rapture means is the catching up into the new spiritual air that you're talking about. So there's no problem with me teaching the rapture. I just teach it right, and so do you. So use the word so you can relate to these pre-tribbers because the only problem is not the word, it's the chronology. And all you gotta do is read the scriptures literally, like you did, and you get the proper chronology. So why are we fighting, brother? Let's just stop. And, uh, you know, put the word rapture behind. Now, there are other doctrinal issues that you and I have had, and I believe those come from the Bullinger issue. Just like this dispensationalists get the Schofield issue, there's other guys out there that did the same thing. So, so you, you fell for that. There's no gap theory. There's no millions of years. No reason to, to put that in there. Now, if you want to differ over my belief that God is doing the 7,000 year process over and over and over and over again, or maybe has multiple universes. If, if you have a problem with that, okay, let, please let's call that a doubtful disputation, which is in Romans. I think that's Romans 14, right? Uh, verse 1. But, you know, the, the antagonism that comes from you, um, <laughs> like a little yip-yap attack dog, <laughs> I look at your picture, <laughs> for anybody else listening don't understand what I'm talking about, it's a little pug dog is looking at me, you know, like yipping at me, yip, 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 yip. <laughs> um, we believe the same thing, John, and you probably subscribed to my channel because of that, but you've just got this beef with the word that the rest of the lost world uh, understands. Don't fight that. Don't bother. Just tell them what the rapture really is. It's the, resur it's the flying up after the resurrection. Because when we get changed, we get resurrected. It's the same thing. The only difference is some are already dead and some are still alive. Still alive gets changed. Already dead gets resurrected. Same thing. They go first so that we see it. Then we go. F then we get changed. And then we all go up. 
and then the rest of the world unfortunately sees it all happen too they see the uh, I, don't, I don't know what it's going to look like but they see bodies come out of the ground question mark I, I don't know what it's going to look like we'll be resurrected I don't know I, I think maybe it's well where does the body come from does it come from underground or does it fly in the air back from heaven with Jesus? Uh, it seems like the concept of the resurrection has to come out of the ground of the earth. That's where hell and the um, Abraham's bosom are. So that would make sense. So they come out of the ground and people see them and they freak out. <laughs> and uh, and then we see it too but we know what's going on and we're shouting for joy and we're praising our God and then we poof twinkle into another spiritual being and then I guess we don't even learn how to fly we just get yanked up that's what it seems like to me God teaches us how to fly our God our God our King our Jesus Christ he teaches us how to fly and we go up and then the day of the Lord begins because that's the very beginning of it and it all happens in the twinkle of an eye I don't know how long the actual resurrection will happen and I'm thinking it'll be seconds if not also a twinkling of an eye I don't know but it's not gonna be an hour it's not gonna be years so it just starts the day of the Lord and then the day of the Lord goes for a day why can't we take that literally I don't think it's gonna take years and years for God to pour out the seven vials on the earth to kill everybody God can kill everybody in a day he can kill everybody in um, 40 days and 40 nights of rain that just never stops I think he can do it in a day with vials of wrath, spiritual wrath, but also physical. I think it's going to be, you know, literal um, meteors and stuff like that, just bombarding the earth. And I, I don't know, I, I won't be here. I'll be up in the air, I suppose, praying. I don't know about what yet. Um, because it's 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 too late on, on the earth it is judgment day at that point okay the uh, things getting close enough to 15 John are we friends again please understand and don't don't make such a big deal about the um, the original languages f for everybody as if you know you've got to do it from that language only or you'll never get it you, you can't be like that because nobody else really speaks those languages and it's very 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 unreasonable to suggest that you have to learn a language you've never ever spoken or even been around people that speak um, to be able to really understand what God's saying that's unfair of God he wouldn't do that he put it in our language the language that when you go to every foreign country it seems not that I've traveled but I've seen lots and lots of pictures watched the international news and there's always pictures of the store name in their language and English go to airports and it's their language and English English is the world's language it's the world's common tongue like Greek was like Latin was for a while I suppose like uh, Babylonian might have been uh, Ar was that Aramaic Aramaic is in the uh, Bible too um, interesting how that Gentile influence from a Gentile king the particular king of the Gentile world for example number one Babylon in Daniel the head of gold isn't that interesting and his language somehow snuck in to the Hebrew Bible I guess God doesn't really care so much that it has to all be in Hebrew you know 
it's not that big of a deal to God which language it was. He doesn't care about which language. He cares about what he says, the meaning of it. That's what he needs to preserve. And he did it ever so cleverly through a chain, ever-changing language system of an ever-changing man system. We are nothing like Adam was. <clears throat> so why should we have to return back to that? Or even to uh, Arabic, um, Aramaic, I meant, um, or Greek, or Latin, like the Catholics might say. Why, we don't need to go back to those tongues. God was able to supernaturally preserve his word all the way through history of time, all the way into English for Jesus' second coming. I think that's really awesome. And that's the most biblical way I can use that word instead of the 1980s, awesome dude, you know. That's the real, we're in awe of that. And God is the only thing that's worth being in awe of. That's the whole point. There's nothing else that, can, that we can be in awe of because everything else is vanity, as the book of Ecclesiastes says. I could probably just keep going and going and going because the timer runs out. And <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to end it up uh, right here. And I love you, John. Uh, as a brother in the Lord, I do. I believe you believe in Christ. I believe you are born again. But I believe you have a thorn, maybe, a thorn in the side, and it's this dependency on the Hebrew for everybody. Do it yourself and teach people what things you find. Teach the magic and make videos out of it and show people some cool stuff like that. Some of the things you said here, the Aleph and the Tav, um, I, I kind of had heard that before, but uh, maybe more people need to know about that. So go for it. But meanwhile, I'm going to do what I do, and I'm going to do it out of the right book because I don't have to look at the other books anymore. Um, I know which one in English is the right one. It's never failed me yet, and I know that it won't. Um, so I suggest everybody does that and comes to that decision themselves and makes it that much easier on themselves to understand what God's trying to say. Because the, okay, the literal interpretation of the King James Bible is, the, is really the only way to figure out what God is literally telling us. It's the whole point. God can't, God can't expect us to read his mind when he uses something symbolic. He'll tell us it, through the symbology um, what something means if we need to know what it means. But I'm sure there's plenty of spirit, uh, symbology in, in the Bible that we, we don't need to know. So it will remain a mystery to us. Maybe after we're resurrected into the spiritual realm, we'll, we'll then get it. Our eyes will be opened. Um, maybe that's true. I don't know. We'll see when we get there because no one's been in the spirit and come back to tell about, to tell the story. Uh, well, I knew a man. <laughs> okay, that was uh, kind of a very bad quote from, what is it, 2 Corinthians? I just went through that recently. Okay, um, yeah, I'm done. John, peace. Let's end this now, all right? I love you, and... Um, Stay on the channel and challenge me on things. But please listen when I give you an answer because we're not necessarily actually disagreeing all the time. And the things that we are, I, I, I think I've got strong, valid points. And now that I've shown you this here, give me the benefit of the doubt. I might actually know what I'm talking about. We agree on so much. Uh, maybe I'm seeing it a way that you're not, and let me, you know, I believe the thorn is, all, or the beam is already out of my own eye, now let me clean yours. That's what that parable actually, yeah, that's what that actually 
is saying. Okay, I'm done. Good night.